Right there. What? Indiana. <laughs> Scene 1B, take 4. Found is the story of a young man who one day finds a stray dog. He decides to take it home, and eventually the two of them form a bond. But then one day, he discovers that the dog's real owner is actually looking for her. And he's so confused as to what he should do about it. You know, should he give her back? Should he keep her? What starts off as a tale about friendship then sort of drifts into this morality tale. It's a film about essentially learning to do the right thing. In 2017, I had just completed my first short film, The Painter, which I later submitted to a bunch of film festivals, but it got rejected by virtually all of them. I mean, it was my first short film, and it was 30 minutes long, and it had no dialogue, so I understand, you know, <laughs> all of that. In the end, I had no choice but to just put it up on YouTube and move on with a new project. As to what that project was going to be, I knew that I had to make it shorter, with dialogue, I just needed a story. My brother had been watching YouTube videos of other filmmakers and he gave me a little exercise to do. He would give me a word and based off of that word, I would make a short film out of that. And the word he gave me, which was very random by the way, was gray. Black and white to me kind of always represented sorrow. So I imagined a character in depression, and the question that I had to answer was, how does that character get out of that state of mind? Well, most writers draw from their own experiences, right? So basically I had to ask myself, what makes me happy? I always wanted a dog, but sadly I was never in a position to be able to take care of one. But while I was living in Los Angeles, there was a rescue shelter that I really liked to visit all the time. It was one of those places where they let the dogs roam around free. They, they weren't kept behind cages or, or glass or anything like that. You can just walk in at any time and just play with them. So every chance I got, I just went in there and I played with the dogs and it made me feel so happy. So from then on, I decided to make a movie about a dog. I got to work on a script, which uh, took me a few months to complete. And then once I had a script, I started to storyboard the entire thing. Then I took those storyboards and put together a small animatic with subtitles and sound effects. And looking back on it, I was actually surprised at how much of the final product looked exactly how I originally pictured it. And not only was I able to see the film for what it was going to look like, but others were able to see it as well. I mean, you basically have the whole film right there in front of you, just, you know, a crude version of it. And I used that video to show people, you know, what I was planning in order to generate some interest. The most challenging part of making this film was finding a cast and crew. From the very beginning, I knew that I had to cast an actor who already had a dog. I wanted the dog to feel as comfortable with the actor as possible. Seeing as I was trying to make a no-budget film, I couldn't afford a trained dog or a dog trainer. I also had to find an actor who would do this for practically nothing except food and credit because that's all I had to offer. I realized that that was a pretty tough order. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, it was a very frustrating and depressing time. I ended up casting and recasting the roles several times over the course of a year and a half because a lot of things happened that were completely out of my control. There was scheduling conflicts. A lot of people ended up dropping out of the project for one reason or another, or I would actually have to let people go because of lack of communication. Communication, oh my God, communication was, it sucked. At a certain point, I was even advised to just move on with a different project. People said to me, well, maybe all these setbacks are a sign that maybe this project wasn't meant to be. But I, I just, I didn't want to do anything else. This was the only project that I wanted to do. And so I vowed from then on that, you know, I was not going to give up until I have absolutely exhausted every option. One day, I went onto Facebook and I just typed, Hey guys, does anyone know where I might find an actor with a dog? You know, just to see what would happen. Take four.
Arlene was the first and only person to respond. She was the one who put me in touch with Tyler Jones. He and her were really good friends. And when I saw his headshot, I thought, this guy is actually what I was looking for. He was the right age, the right look, and more importantly, he owned a dog. And because Arlene and Tyler were already friends and the three of them had a lot of history and chemistry together, I figured that these guys would be perfect for my film. But there was still a snag. Tyler was planning on moving to Washington DC within a few months. That gave me such a little time frame to get this film done. I thought, oh man, I better get my ass moving. I went on a scouting mission to find a few possible filming locations, and I found a park near Pasadena with a nice little secluded area, hardly anybody there. You're not recording, are you? Of course I am. <laughs> oh, careful, because I don't have a lot of room on my memory card, you know? That's fine. No one would have bothered us, which was perfect, and Tyler and his roommates also allowed us to use their own place, which was good, because, like I said, I wanted the dog to feel right at home. I was aware that filming an animal can be tricky. All I had to do was let the dog do her thing, and me, I would just be sitting in the corner with my camera, waiting for the right moment. I was working at a movie theater at the time, and there I was able to find a couple of people who agreed to crew for me. There was Calvin Chacon, who ended up being my first assistant director. I mean, the knowledge that this guy possessed. He could take a camera apart and put it back together if he wanted. If it wasn't for his guidance and assistance, I would have gone crazy trying to figure things out on set. Believe me. Scene one, A, take three. Also working at the movie theater was an actress named Michelle Dion. I asked her to play the part of the ex-girlfriend at the beginning of the movie. Now, she had a small part, she didn't have any lines, and after she was done filming her scenes, she volunteered to stick around and help with the rest of the shoot because she told me she enjoyed being on a film set. I mean, that's the sort of people you want to work with in this business. Because of the efforts of all these people, we finally got this film done. In early October of 2019, I actually ended up moving out of Los Angeles and back to Ohio. And that's where I finished editing the film. But way before production on Found began, a friend of mine had actually introduced me to a guy named Joel Michael. He was part of a local rock band called Along Came a Spider. I was looking for a piano player at the time because earlier on, I envisioned the score to be kind of like a soft, jazzy kind of piano music. She put me in touch with him and we started collaborating. And I am very proud of the work that he did. He pretty much made the film into what it is now. He saw things in a way that I would not have. As a filmmaker, sometimes we can be too close to a project that we may miss a few things that could work, which is why it's always nice to have another set of eyes and ears because they could steer us in the right direction. You cannot make a film on your own. And I was so blessed to have the people that I had that made this film into a reality. I could not have done it without them. They were incredibly generous with their time and their talent and for that, I will always be grateful. The whole point of doing Found was to get better, to learn from my past mistakes, and to grow as a filmmaker. New mistakes were made on this film, new lessons were also learned. There will always be obstacles that will get in the way. That's, that's, that's just, that's inevitable. There's nothing you can do about that. If there's one thing that Found has taught me though, it's that if you believe in a project strong enough, you will you will do anything that it takes to get it done. You know what my brother always asks me? How badly do you want this? That is a question we all have to ask ourselves. How badly do we want this?